Additive manufacturing is essentially the process of joining materials to make objects from 3D model data, so computer-aided design or CAD data. Uh, this is usually done layer upon layer. What high-speed sintering does is replace this laser system with an infrared lamp and an inkjet printhead. We have a bed of powdered material. And then what we do is input thermal energy into that bed in the form of an infrared lamp. The inkjet printhead prints an ink containing carbon black, which is an infrared radiation absorbing material. So we print ink in a desired cross-section, and then the infrared lamp will pass over the build bed, and the cross-section with the ink will receive more thermal energy than the rest of the build bed due to the carbon black, enough to sinter the powder. And then what we would do is repeat the process, so deposit a fresh layer of powder and repeat the process until we have a completed 3D object. What we've done in this research is change the amount of ink in the cross-section. What we've done is have various densities of black dots with spaces in between, which changes the amount of carbon black within the cross-section. What we found was that at the parameters commonly used for manufacturing nylon 12, we're actually using an excess of ink by printing in fully black. We observed much higher tensile properties, so ultimate tensile strength, elongation of breaking Young's modulus, by printing at lower ink levels. So this research will allow us to produce parts with much higher mechanical properties than we've seen before, allowing it to compete with processes such as injection moulding, whilst at the same time reducing our ink consumption, which saves on relatively expensive ink costs. So there are a number of applications for this technology. One obvious one is to make use of the fact that we can start making parts that have different properties throughout different parts of the part. So for example, we could make things like uh, outsoles for running shoes, which are quite stiff in certain areas and relatively flexible in other areas. And we can do that all with one material. So another potential area to take advantage of this technology is the fact that we can make parts that have different densities. So for example, we can make parts that are quite stiff and dense on the outside, but low weight in the middle, so we can start lightweighting parts for uh, transport applications in automotive and in aerospace, for example. From a sustainability perspective, this is also very exciting because it allows us to make parts with a variety of different properties, but all using a single material. So this means at the end of life, uh, recycling or reusing of the material is far easier than if we'd had to use lots of different materials in a single part. One of the key findings of this technology was how we could use grayscale to change the properties of parts. But the grayscale approach that we used was uh, one that we called dithering, where we make lots of little dots on the part. Uh, our next generation of machine that we're going to make will do what we call true grayscale by printing different sizes of drops and that will allow us to fine tune this process to optimise our process parameters further and uh, increase part strength we hope, um, but also to help to uh, uh, increase the, the quality of parts we make overall.